HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And on the side right here is just a quick picture of a very short um, code in HTML. And we'll dive deeper into it now. Um, so HTML is like the structure of the website. So like all the text, the images, it's where you put like all the information. Um, and I think you'll get a better understanding of what it is in these slides. So if you still have questions after I go over this, um, just let me know. So the syntax for HTML is that you use something called tags. So um, this picture is pretty good at describing it. Um, there's an opening tag and a closing tag. And does anyone notice what like the difference is between the two? And it's something that will stay the same for every single tag that you use. So anyone notice? Yes, yeah, so the closing tag has, is that a forward slash? Yeah, I think it's a forward slash. Um, and you always have to keep that in mind because if you switch it up, then your program will not run as you expect it to. Um, and then the middle part is just the text. So the tag plus the text combined makes up the HTML element. Um, if you have any questions on that, just type it in the chat. Yeah, Sruti, that's exactly right. Okay, so now this is a quick look at an example of a bunch of different um, HTML elements. And as you can see, um, each tag has a different like label. So the first one is H1, the second one is P, H2, and then P. And I know you probably have like not much context right now, but can anyone guess what H1, P, and H2 might stand for? Yes, so everyone who is typing in the chat, Suresh, Ishan, Karen, great job, guys. You guys are exactly right. So he heading is the H, and then paragraph is the P. And then I think someone mentioned something about sizes, and whoever said that is also right. So H1 is actually the biggest heading size, and it goes all the way down to H6, which would be the smallest heading. And then paragraph is just for like, big chunks of text usually. Um, so more about text formatting. HTML contains several elements for defining text with a special meaning. Um, so it's kind of like in like Word or Google Docs when you choose the bold and like the italics. Obviously on a website, you can't just choose an option and it does it automatically for you. You have to write it out in the code. Um, so these are some common ones that are used. So the B tag would be bold. The strong tag is important, I for italic, M for emphasized, and then the mark tag is for highlighted. I'm not sure why it's called mark, but that's um, the most common ones, but you can explore them all here. Um, Rhea, could you send this out too? Sorry, it's kind of hard to send links. Um, but the link that Rhea sends out will have all of them on a website, so you can take a look at that. And then the picture on the right side shows how you could use it. So it's the exact same code, but the second paragraph, the second paragraph um, line has the B tag, which is why in the um, website it shows up as bold. So if you have any questions about that, just ask. Okay, so now that we have a basic idea of HTML, um, we're gonna build a quick basic page um, just to try it out. So let me stop share. Okay. Do you guys see the replica page? Yeah. So once you go to your replit account, you can press the new REPL. And then what you wanna do is select this option, HTML, CSS, JS. 
So JS actually stands for JavaScript. We're not gonna get into that today because it's a bit too complex for just a 40 minute workshop, but um, make sure you choose this option and then you can name it whatever you want, um, like basic website or something like that. And then just create the REPL. Okay, so now when you um, reach this page, you're gonna see um, a few lines of code actually already in the HTML file. So on the left side, you can see index.html. Obviously that's where we type the HTML code. Script.js is JavaScript and we're not gonna use that today. And then style.css is what we'll be using in the second half. So you wanna go to index.html and you want to find the body tag and that's where you'll start your code. So you can say h1, hello, h1, and then you should see it pop up right there. And you can also open it in a new tab and see it there. And for some reason, I always have to take out the X when I use Reflet. Okay, but let me just look if there's questions. Yes, you should go to Replit um, to follow along. If you have questions about, um, I was having trouble. Okay, so if you attended the opening ceremony, I think you should have created an account, but if you did not, um, yeah, just do that really quickly. It's a pretty easy process and then um, start creating your web page. So I will give you guys like a minute or two to work on that. And I'll show you guys what I have in this example. So as you can see, I put, I tried using H1 tags, um, H2, H4, and then right here, the emphasis tag to make it italics, um, the strong tag to make it bold. And then this is what, the website turned out looking like. And don't worry about the images for now, we'll get into that right after in a few minutes. But I just wanna give you guys a minute or two to explore the different text tags. So just work on that for now. Okay, um, does anyone need more time trying to work with the different text tags? Okay, I'm gonna take that as a no and I'm going to move on to other useful HTML tags that you guys can use to make your websites look even better. So the first one that um, obviously almost every single web page you'll ever go to has are images. So for this, you'll use the IMG tag and it's somewhat unique in, with, in that um, it doesn't have a closing tag. So obviously in the P tag, the H tags, we saw that we had to have an opening and closing but in this, everything is in the same one tag. Um, so you don't need the closing tag with the slash. So that's just one important thing to remember. And then the SRC attribute, which stands for like the source is um, the link or file path for the image. So as you can see in this example, um, it's a PNG file, but it can also be 
like an image link address that you find online. Um, so yeah, that's how you would embed an image into your app, I mean, into your website. And then um, we'll look at some examples for that after I go over links. Okay, so for links, you want to use the A tag. And this one does have a opening and closing. So, so far the only one we saw that has just a singular tag is the IMG tag. So for this, um, I want you guys to try to type this code into your replit and then let me know um, what you guys notice about this code that's different from image tags and if you see any new attributes or values. So again, attribute is like this SRC equals um, that part. So I'll give you guys like a minute to do that. I was only just able to sign in because um, earlier when I was creating my username and everything, it kept saying, that it was taken. So um, once we go to the index.html, um, how did you like get that um, page on the right? Um, let me go over to the rep. Do you mean, so you got into, does your screen look like this? Um, similar to that, except uh, the top it is a big build a basic website. Instead, it says half enchanting website. Oh yeah, so the name you can just customize it later. Um, but so you see this part, right? You should type the HTML code in the body tag. Do you see that on your screen? Yeah, so I copy and paste it. Um, yeah, so for now, um, just experiment with like the H tags and the P tags. And then also, let me go back to the slide. Okay. How do I get rid of this bar at the top? Um, So I can just put like a paragraph of information? Yeah, just um, experiment with it. And then um, once you do that, try typing this um, code for the link and tell me what you guys see when you do that. Okay, was anyone able to get this link to work for them? Yeah, I have the link. I'm not sure um, if anyone's able to get it to work, but I just sent it in the chat so you can just copy it from there if you would like. So as you can see, um, a link was created and when we use links, um, it uses the href attribute. And then on the website on the right, you can see that um, Facebook, 
is linked. So when I click on it, oh shoot, let me try opening it. So when I click Facebook, it should go to facebook.com. And you can basically repeat that process for any link that you want to include in your website. Um, so you would just change right here for the text that has the link, and then the actual link it goes to is in quotation marks right here. So if you have any questions on that, please make sure to let me know. So again, for links, you use the A tag, which has an opening and closing tag, and you used href or hyperreference. Okay, the final thing that we're going to cover is the button tag. So it's pretty easy to use. It's just button. <laughs> um, and then the closing tag is again, button with the forward slash. And in the next part, we'll explore how we can style the buttons. So right now I'll give you guys like a minute or two to um, explore how to add images, links, and buttons. Um, Shruti, so the button tag helps you create a button <laughs> that you can later use um, to either go to another site, go to another part of your website, um, do a variety of things. And then the A tag, let me go back. The A tag is what you can use for a link. So let me actually show you the example I have. So right here, you can see in my code that I created a paragraph, right? And within the paragraph, I actually embedded a link. So not the whole paragraph is the link, only the warrior's text is the link. So if I go to the website and I click go, nothing's gonna happen, right? Because I only um, made the link, the A tag on the warrior's text. And then when I click on that, it will take me to their website. So that's what the A tag is for. And then the other one we went over was image, I-M-G. And all you have to do for that is use SRC and then include any picture of your choice. So I literally just went to Google, looked up a picture of Boba, copied the link, and then added it to my website. So it's as simple as that. And then, yeah, so I just wanted to give you guys a few minutes to explore how to do that and let me know if you guys have any questions about it. Um, so let me go back. So this is like something you guys can create. We learned how to make headings, paragraphs, make it italics, bold, links, images. So, and then at the very bottom, can you see it? Yeah, at the very bottom, I have a button. Doesn't do anything right now, looks very bland, but we can style it later. And um, yeah, so this is something you guys can create now because we learned everything that's in this page, basically. So yeah, I'll give you guys until like 3.40 for that. Please pause me if I'm going too fast or if you guys have questions, but I just want to um, get through as much of um, the slides as possible. So I'm just going to move up. Oh, someone chatted. Okay, that is a good question. Perfect timing. We're going over it right now. So CSS is the visual part of the website. So as you can probably tell from the website I was showing, it looks very, very boring and probably no one would actually wanna read my website if it just looked like that. So that's what CSS is for. It's to make it look visually appealing so it draws everyone in when they come to your website. So um, a few learning goals, just understand the role of CSS, understand the syntax and experiment with some of the common properties. 
So CSS actually stands for cascading style sheets. Um, style is the key word here because that's basically what it's about. Um, and you can see on the right side, some example code, which we'll get into later. But as you can see, you can change the color of text now, you can change the font size, you can change the um, font family. So like if it's like block letters or anything, um, and then you can also change the background color. So you can basically change anything about the website with CSS. So I want you guys to take a quick look at the CSS Zen Garden. Um, Rhea, thank you. Um, so the main purpose of why I linked this Zen Garden page is just so you can take a look at all the different possibilities with using CSS. So let me share my screen. Okay, so this Zen Garden, I don't know why it's called Zen Garden, but it's showing like how much you can do with CSS. So let me click view all design. Oh, here we go. Okay, so the point of this is to show that all of these different websites have the exact same HTML code. Um, so again, HTML is the structure, but they all have different CSS. So like this looks completely different from what we just saw, but the HTML code is exactly the same. Um, where are the other examples? Let's see. Again, same exact HTML code, completely different design. Let's look at one last one. Looks crazy different, same HTML. So you can look through, oh, sorry, go ahead. What does the HTML code do again? Um, the HTML is like the structure. So it's like all the content, the text, the images, um, yeah, just all the information that's on the page. And then the CSS is the like style, the colors, the visuals. Um, so if you look through this website, all of the sites have the exact same information. It's just the CSS that is making the websites look different. So CSS is basically what people use to make the website look great. Oh. And then the HTML is just the content. So usually you would probably spend more time on the CSS to make it look like really fancy and nice. Okay, so I hope you got the chance to look through that. Um, now we'll be getting into CSS syntax. So CSS rules are what we use to tell the browser how to, how to display the HTML. Um, and please note that with CSS, we have to pay attention to the semicolons and colons. So the syntax is usually that um, we have a selector and then we have curly braces and then the name of a property and then the value. And after the property is where the colon comes and after the value is where the semicolon comes. So you guys, can read through this if you're following along with the slides. We're a little short on time, so I'm just gonna skip through it real quick. Okay, so this is an example of a CSS, um, a bunch of different CSS rules. So P again is one of the tags. So if you included this code in um, your replit, it would change all the paragraph text that you made to have these specific styles. So right here, you're changing the font family, again, with the colon and the semicolon at the end, the font size, the font weight, and then the color. And you can use color like red, blue, green, but if you want specific colors, you can use hex codes, um, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with, but you can definitely look it up and you can find like literally any color. And it's much more specific than just like a typical color name. Um, Sirithi, do you have a question? Yeah, would you need to make a string for all of those? Um, so this is a little, web dev is a little different from like normal code where like normal code, you have to like make variables like for string. Mm -hmm. um, but for this, it's kind of like different from like coding, I guess. It's more like, it's just like rules. You don't have to create variables. And 
CSS, like in CSS, color, font weight, font size, font family, they're already like known. So you don't have to define it, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. Can you like create your own font? Um, I mean, you probably could, but I think you would have to, yeah, I don't know how that works, but you probably could, but it's easier to just use like font families that are already established. So yeah. yeah. Okay, so let me stop share. Okay, if you have any questions, I know it's kind of a lot for a short amount of time. Okay, let me use my screen. Okay, so this again is the website that I just made um, with all like the info that it had. And I'm just copying this over from, so that I don't have to type it out again. But as you can see, I have the um, name of the tag here, and then I have the different um, like font family, margin, font style with the values followed by a semicolon. And then when I do that, it changes um, certain elements. So as you can see, I think the only thing that really changed here was the welcome to OA hacks part because I only changed the style for the H1 tag. But if I wanted to change it for the paragraph, I can add it and say, say red. And now, oh, I don't have any details. Let me try this. Yeah, so now all my paragraphs are also in blue. So I'll give you guys like a minute or two to experiment with that and let me know if you have questions. Okay, while you guys are exploring the different um, things you can do in CSS, I just want to mention one more thing. So you can also add borders to an element. And these are really helpful for seeing like how much space each thing is taking up. Um, oh shoot, it's right here. So let me copy this. So this is an example of a border declaration you could add. Oh my God. to any um, um, tag you have. So like P, H1, any of them. And then, so you have three values here. And as you can see, one PX would refer to the thickness of the line. Solid refers to the border style. In this case, it's solid, but there's also like dotted, dashed, a bunch of others that I don't know off the top of my head, but you can see um, on this link right here. And then red is the color of the border. So let me add it to one of my elements so you guys can take a look at it. Let me add it to my H1. So as you can see, this is what my page looks like without the border. 
And then when I add it, it's right there. So let's try changing the thickness to like five. And yes, it's a lot darker now, dotted. Looks like that now, green. Yeah, looks like that now. So you can customize it however you want. Um, CSS is really the part where you can like be creative with it, change it around a bunch of things. Um, and there's a lot more you can do other than just like color border, but that's kind of all we can get into today, unfortunately. But um, I'll give you guys like one more minute to keep exploring and let me know if you have questions. Do you have a question, Sufi? Yeah, so um, for the color, you know how you wrote the numbers? So hashtag 373FFF semicolon. So um, is it like necessary to add those numbers? Um, um, so that's actually just to make the color like super customized to what you want. You could just do like green, but let me show you actually. So you can go to HTML color codes or literally any website. Um, and then you can move around and choose whatever color you want. And say, I want this color. You just copy this six, six digit code. Um, where did my website go? I think it's here. Yeah, and then you can just change it. Can you repeat that? Sorry. Is she frozen for you guys too, or is it just me? Okay, hopefully she rejoins soon and hopefully I answer your question, but I'm going to move on. We have like five more minutes. I want you guys to try a quick challenge. Um, I'm gonna skip this actually. So for exploring buttons, No, I don't think we can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Or like even when your sound works, it's like crackling, I think. Like even okay, so I'm going to move on. So um, like I said before, we remember how we created buttons with the button tag, um, and then you can put text in the button. And now we're gonna try to style them. So there's actually two different ways you can do it. Um, or actually there's more than two, but we're gonna look at two of them. So first part of this code right here is just the actual button itself. So there's like a border, it's a certain color. Um, border radius is actually how you would round the corners and then the second part at the bottom is what you want to change when the user hovers over the button. So in this case, with cursor and then colon pointer, the cursor will change from an arrow to a pointer finger when they hover over the button. I hope that made somewhat sense. Um, if you have questions about what I just said, please ask in the chat. But with the last few minutes, I want you guys to try out this little challenge. You can either um, use the same Revlet file or create a new one. So first part is to just create this button with the text try pro free for seven days. It's like from some sort of website and then adjust the CSS to show um, the border that you can see here. And um, you can choose any color, it doesn't have to be purple. But again, you would want to use this type of format. And then if you finish that and want a challenge, um, try to adjust it so that when the button is hovered over, it changes to look like this. But then when you take your mouse off the button, it changes back. Um, and I have the solution, so I'll show that to you guys in like three minutes. But 
just work on this for now and let me know if you guys are able to solve it. I joined on a different device. Is it better now? Yeah, it's better now. Okay, thank you. So um, what I was saying is for the um, number, like, does it really matter if you add it in or not? Um, so you have to define a color. So you can't just like leave it blank if that's what you're asking. But you don't have to use um, that specific like format. You can just type the name of a color. Oh, okay. so is that like, um, are the numbers just to specify one specific like range of a color? Or? Yeah, yeah. So each, there's like a built, like so many different combinations and each one represents like a specific color. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I'll give you guys like two more minutes to try this and let me know if you need help. I'm actually going to copy the example code in the chat for you guys just to make it a little bit easier since we're short on time. And you can delete the comments like the number one, number two, number three. Those were just for notes. So I'll give you guys a little bit more time. Yeah, so the number one, number two, number three was just um, so that I can make these like points on the right side about the code. So yeah, don't worry about that. Was anyone able to at least finish the first half, just the design the button without the hover? Yeah, don't worry about it be looking that good. I know we have like very little time right now. Um, okay, but that's good that you guys were able to do that part. Um, let me show you. So I actually did this on another website, not Replit, but it's the same thing basically. Let me just reload it. Okay, so just quickly running through it in my HTML, the only thing I have is this button. Again, opening um, tag is button and closing tag is with the slash in it. And then inside, I just put the text try pro free for seven days. And that's all I have in HTML. So in CSS, okay, so as you can see on the right side, um, it looks like that. When I hover it, it changes, right? Um, 
I go back, it changes back. So basically what I did is in the button right here, there's a bunch of extra things that you guys don't need to have, um, but I made the color of the text purple, the background color white, um, and the border was the exact same color as the text. So as you can see, the two numbers, or like the two codes are the exact same. So that's why it looks like that. And then when I hovered over it though, I changed the background color to be that same purple color and the text of the color is now white. And the cursor also becomes different. I don't know if you can see it on the share screen, but it changes from an arrow to like a finger thing. So yeah, that's just how I did it. Um, I can link this code for you guys to see it later on. But yeah, if you have any questions about that, just let me know. Um, okay, quickly going through resources if you want to keep learning more. Um, W3Schools is like, has literally everything about HTML and CSS. So if you ever have questions, just check this website and I'm pretty sure it will be there. There's a lot of beginner courses and camps um, about web dev and a few project ideas. If you want to keep practicing, you can create like a site about yourself and practice with all the images, links, colors, etc. And you can also try making like a photo gallery. And that's especially helpful with just like learning how to um, manage like the spacing and the margins and everything like that. But that is it. Um, sorry that I went over time. Oh my God. Um, we'll take a quick group photo right now. Okay, cool. So if everyone wants to turn on their cameras, do you guys have something to do that? Okay. And for our web development workshop, so three. Oh, just kidding. There's more people. One sec. Okay, cool. So everybody smile in three, two, one. Okay, perfect. Great. And um, Angie, for the attendance form, please. Okay, so please be sure to fill out the attendance form for the web development workshop. We're going to go straight into our Looptastic Fun workshop hosted by Ryan Dang and Manuel. So um, if you guys need a minute, we can we can do like a one minute break, just like get up, get water, um, and then we'll get started. So Ryan and Manuel, if you guys want to start um, prepping your slides.